And welcome everybody, I'm Robert Adici and uh, we're going to be playing Conspiracy of Mages, the Dark Eye solo adventure. Uh, I do social media for Ulysses Spiel and uh, since a lot of us are home these days, we've been trying to put out a lot of content um, for video for all of you. You can check out our Twitch channel, we've got a bunch of stuff. Uh, we just put out an article on the website that that shows all of our uh, uh, all of our shows that are coming out uh, and there'll be more to come so check out uh, our website uh, you can also check out our YouTube page uh, Ulysses International and uh, we've got a bunch of stuff up there as well so this is the first session of uh, the conspiracy of mages solo adventure which you can get this uh, adventure for free right now at pay what you want on drive through RPG you know we're trying to give people things to do while they're home um, and if you can't meet to play up with, uh, you know, play the Dark Eye with your friends, or you want to learn the Dark Eye, you can grab uh, Conspiracy of Mages and learn. It has everything you need. You don't need to know any of the rules. It will walk you through every step of the way. Uh, and one cool thing about this adventure, which we'll get into, is that you don't need dice even uh, if you have this adventure. It's got the little uh, dice at the bottom, which we'll go into to show you, but I think that's pretty cool. I do have some dice, but maybe we'll try the dice this way a little bit as well. Um, so if you go to our website, ulysses-us.com, you can, uh, you can find a, a article called Stay Home and Play, and it's got a bunch of stuff for the Dark Eye that you can uh, play at home, both this adventure and the Vampire of Havana adventure, which I just ran through. Unfortunately, our character died, our rogue died in that adventure, but, um, maybe you can play it and you can survive and you can defeat the Vampire of Havana. So, uh, but you can get that on the on the website as well. It kind of gives a link to it. Um, oh man, I thought I removed that song. Which song is it? The Austrian Wedding, huh? All right, I'll go to the next version of that. I could have swore I moved that one. I'm gonna remove it right now. Um, remove from the playlist. There we go. Okay, hopefully that'll do it. If you <laughs> if you see anything. Um, yeah, I took I, t I took out self destruct immediately. Saying there's multiple songs of singing. I thought I took them all out. I guess I missed them. Um, but if you hear it again, let me know. <clears throat> Anyways, as I was saying, so you can go to the website. You can get uh, uh, Conspiracy of Mages, Vampire of Havana, and you can get um, the main Dark Eye core rulebook. All at pay what you want, so that you can uh, you know have another reason to, to stay home and play. Um, there's also some resources for Fantasy Grounds and for a uh, uh, for a mobile game um, for Tabletop Simulator to play Aventuria and more. So please go check that out. Um, so let's uh, let's get into it. So this is the um, this is the book here, uh, the PDF. Um, looks like there's a map, which I'm sure we'll come to later. And his, here's the preface. So this is like a, an enhanced PDF. Um, it's got a readme you can see right here. So a little pop, oh, you guys can't see the pop-up right now. But basically it says, uh, greetings to the 12. Purpose of this interactive form is to more easily navigate through the adventure. Uh, to navigate through the adventure, you can use the bookmarks panel or you can click on the section number. So it just basically goes through and just kind of tells you what you can do. Uh, one of the features that's cool is that there's time tracking in this adventure. And so this PDF allows you um, to track the time and then you can reset your form so you can replay it again. So that's kind of cool. Um, this has, uh, has a sidebar and it shows you kind of all the different sections with combat, uh, or not with combat, but with, uh, the, with rules and how, how to go through the rules. So that's cool. I think I'm going to have to double re read again the, the combat section because last time, the final combat, I think I messed up some of the combat. And so um, I'll have to make sure that I'm more familiar with it this time. Um, let's see. So it says, oops. It says you need, uh, you can use six or 20 sided die. Um, but as I said, we can, it has automatic things. It, it It's probably not as useful uh, on a PDF, but maybe there, so, so if you look down here, yeah, you can see, oops, you can see it here. Those are die rolls. 
And so you could you could just click. Uh, I could click a different section. It would take me to a different page, like a, a seemingly random page. And so that could be our die rolls, um, which is kind of cool. And, you know, in case you don't have dice, if you're somewhere where you don't have dice, you're stranded, whatever, you can still download the adventure and still play it. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go back up here. <clears throat> let's see where we need to read. This is the general overview stuff. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and start reading that. So introduction introduction to Aventuria. Aventuria is just one of many continents in the fantasy world of Dare, the any award-winning setting of the Dark Eye. This richly detailed world features many fabulous kingdoms, cultures, and races, each with its own gods, myths, heroes, forms of currency, and units of measurement. Don't worry if a term seems unfamiliar to you at first. Some some you can learn from context, some defined in the text, and we define, and some we define in this introduction. The Midden Realm is an assembly of duchies and allied provinces, is arguably the most powerful human empire in Aventuria. The city of Lowengen lies outside the Midden Realm in an area called the Svelt Valley, a river valley with a temperate climate, good soil, and reliable harvest. Orcs conquered the valley several years ago and now rule with an iron fist. Lowengen is the only exception. This prosperous city secures its relatively peaceful autonomy by paying a hefty annual tribute to the orc chieftains. The city boasts two famous magical academies, one of which is the Lowengen Academy of Transformation, is the, back, uh, is the backdrop of this adventure. For, prestigious, for the, or this prestigious school specializes in magic that alters the properties of living creatures. Citizens of Lowengen often incorrectly refer to the Academy's students as scholars. Lowengen uses the Midden Realmish currency, namely iron cruisers, bronze howlers, and the eponymous silver dollars, and golden ducats. The exchange rate is as follows. One ducat is 10 silver dollars, equals 100 howlers, and is 1,000 cruisers. One Aventurian yard of distance equals 36 inches, although one Midden Mile common unit for measuring long distances is just 1,094 yards long. Many Aventurians worship a pantheon known collectively as the Twelve Gods. Believers refer to the sun as Prios's disc or Prios's eye in honor of the sun god Prios, who reigns as a lord of the gods. The moon is called Mata's sign after the goddess Mata, and people born with a magical talent are said to possess Mata's gift. Boron is the god of death and the god of dreams. Undertakers mark graves with his symbol, a broken wheel called Boron's Wheel. <clears throat> so it gives a little call out here um, for for the protection rating. So it gives you all the examples of your character sheet stuff over here um, in these little call outs if you, if you need them for the moment. I'm not sure why this one's right here, but there it is. All right here, it looks like this is the city of uh, Lowengen, a little map. Looks pretty cool. Looks like this is a table of titles for students at the um, what was it called? Lowengen, or the Academy, Lowengen Academy of Transformation. <clears throat> Which you might need to refer to later. So let's go look at our character real quick. So it looks like we've got a um, we've got a mage. It says profession gray mage at the Lowengen Academy of Transformation in the Svelte Valley. Our social standing is a free guild mage. Here's our stats. In uh, the dark eye, your stats are courage, sagacity, which is like uh, intelligence. Um, intuition, charisma, dexterity, agility, constitution, I think, and strength. Um, and in the dark eye, you need to roll equal to or less than your uh, than your ability, or I forget what they call if they're abilities or attributes. Um, and then skills, which we'll be rolling a lot of later. Um, it's a really interesting system where you roll three dice depending on the skill and your skill ranks help you succeed. It's interesting, it's a, a nuanced system that's cool. Uh, I could see it being really useful in um, 
in a group game. I haven't played this. Actually, no, that's not true. I did play it in a group game. I ran it actually not too long, uh, just the other day, uh, my first time. And so it had a lot of nuance to say, like if you're rolling your body control, which is like your, you know, how agile you are when if you need to jump or, or, or something like that. Um, and the two roles are against agility, agility and constitution because you have to be somewhat tough, but mostly just how agile you are. And so if you fail your con roll on a body control check, then you know that, you know, whatever you failed had a result because, uh, you know, you, you weren't able to kind of keep up um, your endurance, which is cool. Um, so there's that. One of the things that we're going to learn this time, I'm sure, is magic uh, because we are a mage. Um, here's our equipment. And I don't know anything about the magic system, how it works out, just the basics other than they're like, you use arcane points, arcane energy to power your spells. So here's a bunch of spells um, and they're kind of like skills. So, you know, we'll be making kind of spell checks, I guess, to see if we can cast our spells, but we'll see, it'll explain all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Uh, exam day. Are you frightened of the empty room or the prospect of what lies ahead? Either way, your churning stomach doesn't seem to care. The small bowl of millet gruel you ate for breakfast is not sitting well and you feel nauseated. Magistra Moonhair's cooking might be to blame, but what if this is no accident? After all, she delivered your breakfast and she never did that before. Did she poison it and, make sh and made sure you ate it? Does she hate you that much? Is the, is the music loud? It's, it looks like it's loud to me. I'm going to knock it down here a little bit just to make sure it's not overpowering. Um, Hassan's wisdom be with you, a man says softly. Do you detect a hint of concern in his voice or are you imagining things? You turn in your chair and stare up at the, at the beaming face of Archmage Elkarna Erelon of Highstone, venerable dean of the Lowengen Academy of transformation. You greet him in the traditional manner, though perhaps a bit too slowly, and the old man's smile changes to a worried frown. He sighs deeply and says, Today is a big day, but you look like a mouse transfixed by a serpent. Fate sometimes takes unexpected turns, but it does not do any good to succumb to doubt. Like a young Elev who just failed to cast his first spell, a mage must trust in his skills. He stays aware of his situation, looks into his future with confidence, and acts and as it's as an acts as it is in his power. The old archmage leans in close to you, and several locks of his long white hair slip out under his cat. Slip out from under his cat. A curled strand tickles your nose, and you suppress a sneeze. <laughs> He's got a bunch of cats around him. Um, don't ever forget this. Act, he says. Then he straightens up, gives you an encouraging pat on the shoulder, and exits the room, leaving you alone with your thoughts. Go to section 65. So all these things are linked also. You can see my mouse changes, so I'm just going to click that. And we're off to 65. You drop onto your bed, gazing up at the small chandelier, yet swinging, yet you set swinging via the same cantrip you use to close your dorm room. Close your dorm room door. The chandelier chain creaks slightly. A mage trusts his skills, the dean said. You focus on your breathing. Inhale, exhale, inhale. A mage? Well, it's a problem. You're not yet a mage. Almost, but not quite. A mage trusts his skills. Inhale, exhale. I trust my skills, you whisper to yourself. You pause to gather the facts, as if describing a new plant in alchemy class. You attend the Loigen Academy of Transformation, where you are a studious of an eighth year, a, st a studiosus, an eighth year student. Well, to be precise, you are a candidatus, someone about to take the final exam. When you pass, you will be an adeptus, a full-fledged mage. You focus on your education and show more ambition than any other student in your class. While others spent their rare free time socializing in town, you took advantage of the peace and quiet in the reading room while others put forth the minimum effort necessary. You worked harder, studied more diligently, and conducted elective research whenever you had the chance. You felt the sting of your classmates' envy, scorn, and insults, bookworm, and Morphu slimeball being the least. 
being the least offensive examples. But your patience paid off. You will graduate with more points than the school's previous record holder, Magistra Mela Moonhair. She was the most proficient student in the school's history until you came along. Just one more day until graduation. You remind yourself you, you have nothing to worry about. Your heartbeat slows as you regulate your breathing. And I apologize if I take a bunch of drinks. My throat's been uh, uh, a little scratchy. I'm just getting over something. Uh, I, stay aware, I stay aware of my situation. You say to the empty room, ordering your thoughts the way you were taught. You always pass tests with honors, and you always feel nervous beforehand. But today it's different. You feel nauseated. Of course, this time you can't blame your excitement. This time, the fault belongs to Magista Moonhair. Your trouble started the first time you attempted the final exam two weeks ago. The final is a practical demonstration of spellcasting performed for a panel of three professors. Students cast spells cast spells of the panel's choosing in rapid succession. The day you felt a rare surge of optimism. That day you felt a rare surge of optimism because you were well prepared and well rested. Then Magister Moonhair served you a bowl of porridge that made you ill and caused you to miss the exam. At the time, you thought it was mere coincidence. Thanks for stopping by. Self-destruct immediately. <laughs> Magister Moonhair. Magister Moonhair looked upon you with suspicion from the day you enrolled at Lowagen. She always demanded more of you, treated you curtly, and never failed to embarrass you in front of the other students. She was a former star pupil of the school. After graduating, she applied for a permanent position at the school. Her outstanding academic performance secured her of the title secured her the title of deputy dean. To put her in her place, you strove to be more talented and more dedicated than she. Your achievement soon challenged her reputation, but you never imagined she would poison your food. Thankfully, Archmage Erlon gave you permission to retake the exam. Now here you are lying in bed on the last day of the school year with one last chance to graduate. Almost everyone else in town enjoying a well-earned break. Almost everyone else is in town enjoying a well-earned break. Your exam begins at the 10th hour. I look into my future with confidence, you say quietly, watching the chandeliers swing gently back and forth. You decide to take a few minutes before breakfast to prepare and maybe cast a practice spell or two before reporting to Magister Erelon to take the exam. Today, you graduate and earn the title of Adeptus. I act as it is in my, in my power, you say in a determined voice as you climb out of bed. So section choices. Some sections in this solo adventure let you choose how to proceed. For example, in this section, the section 65 lets you choose to go to either section 139 or to section 181. Other sections simply tell you to go or uh, tell you to go to a specific section. So we, it says if you start with this physical exercise, go to 139. If you start by testing your mental focus, go to section 181. So what do you guys think? Let's see. Should we exercise a little bit or have a mental focus? What do you think we should do? <laughs> As you notice this image, this image is pretty funny. So in, in if you're not familiar with the dark eye, when you cast invisibility, you have to be naked because your clothes don't get invisible with you, which is funny. Hope that's not a spoiler for that section, but we'll see. <laughs> so we can decide if we want to have some physical exercise or mental. I think I think we should do some mental focus if, uh, if I don't see any more comments, I'm going to go with that. One eighty one. You're one of the school's top students. If Magistra Olia's words, a healthy mind lives in a healthy body, are true, then your body seems healthy enough. You were skinny growing up, and if you believe your fellow students teasing, you are still rather thin. This is surprising, given your upbringing. If you believe your classmates' taunts, you are th as thin as a beanpole, and it's a miracle that a runt like you survived to adulthood. This may be true, as Lowagen sits in a rough corner of Aventuria, and orcs live right outside the city gates. They rule the entire region and ignore Lowagen only because its human and elf residents pay the orcs a substantial tribute. 
A girl named Brinja once tried to boost your self-respect by saying you were the you were born slender because orcs do not look for foes behind sa behind behind saplings. Though you appreciated the sentiment, you never found that explanation particularly flattering. Something catches your eye through your little dorm window overlooking the street outside the school and you pause for a moment to consider or, or to examine closer. Glints of sunlight reflect from rain puddles in the road, reminding you of candles and happy memories from long before you enrolled at the school. You clear your mind and try to focus on the day ahead. Uh, so this talks about attribute checks. Is it going to ask us for one? Yep, it is. So let's uh, actually we'll go back to that. As you turn away from the window, you spy your own reflection in the thick plane of glass. You hold up one arm and make a muscle, half jokingly posing like an athlete. With a sigh, you admit you're not a perfect physical spe specimen. Brindra was right when she said you could hide behind a sapling. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, though, you're, you brim with the, confidence you will pass today's exam with honors and you will prove that you deserve a prestigious research and teaching position at the school for now you need serenity you sit cross-legged on your bed close your eyes and try to empty your thoughts you make an intuition check if you succeed go to 92 if we fail we're going to go to 153 so we scroll up here so um attributes and attribute checks um as i said before the checks are courage sagacity, charisma, intuition, dexterity, agility, constitution, and strength. Um, in order to make a check, you need to roll um, equal to or less on a d20. And if you succeed, if, if you do that, then you succeed. If you get higher than that, then you fail. So uh, we need to make an intuition check. So we're going to go look at our character sheet. Let's go. over here character sheet and our intuition is 14 so here we go I rolled a 15 so we failed um, so we failed we're gonna go to 153 you close your eyes take a deep breath and exhale slowly feeling your mind clear you inhale again but this time something goes down the wrong pipe and you choke this is not the past to re path to relaxation Make another intuition check, applying a minus two penalty. If you succeed, go to 218. If you fail again, go to section 10. So let's go ahead and do the random dice roller on the pages. Um, so we're just going to pick a random section. I'm just going to go, here's a section, and I'm going to the page. Oops. It uh, looks like it's only on the right-hand side page. Oh, where did we go? 11. And we got a minus two, so that means we actually need to subtract two from our stat. And our intuition was was 14. So 14 minus two is 12, and we roll an 11, so we succeeded. Yay. All right, uh, so we succeed, 218. Uh, peace and quiet. You relax, focusing on the task before you. Whatever may come, you are strong, you are smart, and you can handle any challenge. You look around your room. Are you focused sufficiently? You do not know, but to be honest, tests always make you nervous and you never had trouble with them before. This test is no different. You feel confident, which is all that matters. Go to section 76. The final exam covers practical magic. You take a few deep breaths and prepare to cast your spell by placing one hand on the wall and forming an image of an exclamation mark in your mind. When you lift your hand from the wall, you see a black exclamation mark emblazoned on the whitewashed surface. This is satisfactory. The mark appears permanent, as if it is painted on the wall, though you know from experience that someone could easily wipe it away. Go to 222. Making an exclamation mark appear on the wall is a first-year student's magic trip, a simple form of magic called a cantrip. Today's exam will test your spellcasting ability. You focus your thoughts and cast penetrizzle, which, as it happens, is the first spell you learned. Adeptus, or ad, adepts must master seven spells to graduate and earn the title of Adeptus. And the first spell students learn at this school is special, not because it lets the caster look through walls, but because it's the only one that does not directly affect someone, someone's mind or body. Failing to cast Penetrizzle correctly 
penetrously, yeah, correctly means you fail to see through the wall. Casting a transformation spell incorrectly, however, can lead to terrible consequences. You know that every student's connection with Penetrezzle goes beyond looking through walls. It opened your eyes to a new world. When you learned this spell, you felt arcane energy flow through your body for the first time in your life. It was not spontaneous and uncontrolled like when you were a child, and neither was it an emotional burst of magic unleashed by your rage or ang anger. Penetrizzle showed that you could master magic. You felt in control of your life for the first time. You have no skill in hunting, flirting, or making things. Your talent lies in magic, and you were confident about today's exam. You face the outer wall again, close your eyes, and speak the incantation. Penetrizzle, penetrizzle, penetrizzle. Roll to cast penetrizzle. If the check succeeds, go to... Okay, so... This uh, didn't really tell us what we need to do, but um, from previous experience, I know we need to roll. Um, it's basically a skill check using courage, sagacity, and intuition. And I've got a little, uh, got some paper here so I can just write things down just to remember what we're doing. So we're looking for penetrezzle. So we got to go over here and go to our spells. And as it says here, spellcaster sees through the wall as if it's not there. Our check is that, which is, is what we saw. Our AE cost is six. If we fail, it still costs us a three. So we need courage, sagacity, and intuition. So let's go check those out. So courage is 13. Sagacity is 15. And intuition is 14. All right, so I'm going to make... a. Uh, a skill roll and I do that by rolling three dice and there's a couple of different ways you can do this if you have as you can see all of these skills or uh, attributes have a different color if you have dice of those color you can uh, you can roll them so I'm gonna go and do that I got red a purplish one and a green one uh, so this is the first way that you can do it so I'm gonna roll it and the red goes with courage which I got a three which is which means I succeed and the purple one is an 18, uh, which we needed a 15, so that fails by three. And then intuition, we got a one, which succeeds as well. So the 18 fails by three, and our spell ability is, what is it? Oh, we gotta go, I guess we gotta go look it up. Uh, here it is. So our penetrable, our spell rating is seven. So that means each time we roll a spell, uh, if we fail one of the checks, then we can use points from our spell rating to kind of cancel out that failure. So the three succeeded and the one succeeded. So we don't have to worry about that. The 18 failed um, and we, we failed by three, which means we need at least three spell rating points to, to drop it down. Uh, to succeed and we have seven so we're good to go so we we succeed all three spells all three checks and we still have four points of spell left so we succeed and we are going to use um it doesn't say here how much it costs i think it was over here for six points so we're going to use six arcane energy and right now we have five sorry we have we have 38 arcane energy points. So we're gonna write that down. Arcane energy, uh, and it costs us six. So we have 29 right now. All right, so we come back over here, we succeed. So we're going to 169. You chant the magical words over and over, pushing your mind forward like a nail driven by a hammer until you can see beyond the wall. You look out upon the city Light from Prios's disc pierces the lightning, lifting fog, and clouds of chimney smoke curl above the rooftops. The half-timber houses across the road crowd each other as if seeking support after a night of revelry. Servants crowd the streets conducting their shopping. A woman goads an ox that refuses to pull her overloaded cart. Several children try to catch an escaped piglet. Two old men share the day's gossip. A battled, scarred woman checks her sword's edge while a sharpener waits nervously for his payment. A well-dressed city council member steps into an alley to avoid a mud puddle, unaware of the woman above him preparing to empty her chamber pot. <laughs> you, 
You look at the, at the honest hustle and bustle of life outside the school. The, this look at the honest hustle and bustle of life outside the school refreshes your spirit. But you feel, you feel the spell draining your strength. Wistfully, you gaze quickly around once more. Then you draw your awareness, withdraw your awareness, forcing it through the wall and back to your body. You open your eyes and lean against the wall while you recover. Subtract six from your total AE, uh, arcane energy, and go to section four. So I already did that, so we're good. <clears throat> you flinch as the courtyard bell rings, striking striking the hour. Where did it go? So I think this is the um, this is a time tracker. We're in section four now. I just want to note this. So this will, I think, I guess we have to press this, and it should add one to our time tracker, which if we go over here, Yep, it marked one already, so that's kind of cool. All right, and we are in section four. You flinch as the courtyard bell rings, striking the hour. Where did the time go? Your exam starts soon, no time to waste. You put on your robe, grab your pointy hat and plain staff, and hurry out of your room. You arrive at the Archmage Eleron's study, wheezing and exhausted with no time to spare. You straighten your robe, take a moment to catch your breath, and knock on the door. No response. You do not hear come in just a moment or any of the other replies that you expect. You knock again, more forcefully this time. Again, you hear nothing. If you continue waiting, go to section 175. If you suspect this is part of the test and enter without explicit permission, go to section 101. Of course, you could try to peer through the wall by casting penetrizzle. Students are not permitted to gaze through walls within the school, but this might be an emergency. If you want to try this, go to section 198. On the other hand, a spell would use up more of your arcane energy. Uh, failing the exam because you were tired would be unbearably humiliating. So maybe you should just peek inside the room through one of the windows. If so, go to section 52. All right. This is our first real decision. I feel like uh, what, do you, what does everybody in the chat want to do? What do you think? So we can just wait. We can... Um, suspect that this is part of the test and just kind of go in. Uh, we can peer through the wall or we can try to peer through a window. What do you think? Once again, we're so we're standing outside the Archmage's door and we are um, waiting to see um, we need to decide on what we want to do. Do you think we want to uh, just go through, uh, continue waiting, look through the wall with a spell, or look through a window? What do you think? I think we are going to... I think I'm patient. I think I'm just going to wait. You know, if it is a test, we probably shouldn't go in. Um, if we're not supposed to cast spells to look through, we probably shouldn't do that. I mean, we could go around, but I don't, I don't think we're quite there yet. Maybe he's just busy. What do you think? Myself, I'm more of a rule follower in general, so I would wait for a few minutes before doing something, something extra. What do you think? <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to wait for a second. 175. So these are circles to cross off, as it says here. So once you've been to a place, then you you click it so that you've been there once. And it might tell you um, what to do if you've been here more than once. So kind of interesting, uh, a little bit different um, choose your own adventure style thing. So nothing like sitting nervously outside the Archmage's office. If this is the first time you've arrived at this section, we go to 126. If it's the second time, we go to another section, and so on. So we're going to 126. You wait for half an hour, but all you see is a mouse that dashes past your feet. At first, you think it's running from Nivea, the school's resident house cat. According to rumor, Nivea is a former student who, came, who became stuck in the shape of a cat. No cat appears. If you continue to wait, go to section 175. Oh, we got to do this. Um, if you politely, impolitely, 
try to turn the doorknob to enter the room, go to section 101. If you try to gaze through the wall with a penetrazel spell, go to 188. And if you want to try peering into the room through one of the windows, go to 1 or go to 52. So again, here we are again with another decision to make. We've waited now. Nothing has happened. I'm saying we go in now, unless you guys have a different idea. Let me know what you think. Hmm. I don't know. I'm done waiting, that's for sure. I think we should just go in. What do you think? All right, here we go. I'm going in. 101. Heart pounding, you turn the doorknob, but the door remains closed. If it has a mechanical lock, twisting the knob would prove fruitless, but you doubt Archmage Aralon would rely on a mundane lock. After all, this is not a school of the White Guild, where teachers view magic with such awe that they focus on theory and ignore application. The thought makes you shudder. You wonder if the puzzle would arise at the Black Guild schools, where demon summoners and other crazy people are commonplace. They probably feel no need to lock their doors as intruders get decapitated and flayed by summon, summon monstrosities. You set these absurd thoughts aside and return to the matter at hand, namely finding Archmage Aralon. If you continue to wait patiently outside the door, go to section 175. If you try gazing through the wall using your penetrazel spell, go to section 198. If you want to peer into the room via an outside window, go to section 52. Hmm. Um, so it appears locked. Well, um, I don't know if I want to waste the, the spell. So let's go, let's go look through the window, I guess. 52. Finding the windows to Magister Elrond's room is not difficult. You follow the narrow corridor. Open one of the building's colorful stained glass windows and look around outside. The edge is at least 30 feet above the street level. The le climbing along the ledge looks risky. You will surely die if you lose your footing, unless you are lucky. Lucky enough to land on the straw-filled cart packed below the Archmage's window. If you want to risk climbing the ledge, go to section 114. If you prefer to continue waiting outside the Archmage's door, go to 175. And if you wish to try opening Magister Aralon's door, go to 101. If you want to try gazing into the room with Penetrezel, a forbidden but less risky option, go to 198. Well, uh, I would imagine we're gonna have to use some sort of dexterity, a probably climbing skill, um, which I don't think we're very good at. Let's see, climbing, we're at courage, agility, and strength. So our courage is uh, 13, agility is 10, and strength is 10. So it's not looking too promising. I think, I think I'm just going to cast the spell then. <clears throat> All right, 198. Penetrizzle, penetrizzle, you remember repeatedly while pressing your brow against the wall of the Archmage Elrilon's room. Roll to cast the spell. So once again, we're at 13, 15, 14. Oh, I'm going to use the, the other... Uh, the other way that you can cast magic is just by rolling your three dice, but instead of uh, assigning them specifically to uh, each die to one of your stats, you just kind of roll them left to right. So my first one is going to be courage, then sagacity, then intuition. So here we go. So my one farthest to the left is a 10, a 20, and a 17. And we have seven skill points, so we're going to need those, looks like. So 10 makes it. 20 does not make it, but it's down by five. And 17 um, does not make it by three. So we needed eight points and we only have seven. So we failed, unfortunately. Um, so we go to 13. So as we fail, we also um, need to spend half of the points, I believe. So uh, our spells. So here it says um, a AA cost failed is three. Yeah. So. We now have 26. <clears throat> An accusatory meow breaks your concentration and the spell fails. Nivia, the school's resident house cat, stands at your feet staring up at you. 
According to popular rumor, Nivea is a former student who botched an advanced spell and permanently transformed herself into a cat. If this rumor is true, you feel embarrassed to have failed a simple spell in Nivea's presence. If the rumor is false, you feel embarrassed about feeling embarrassed in front of an ordinary cat. You also feel embarrassed to be wondering why you feel embarrassed that your spell failed. Well, that's won't help you now. Subtract 3 from your total, which we did. If you want to try casting the spell again, go to section 198. If you want to peer in through the magician's windows, go to 52. If you decide to wait patiently, go to 175. All right, let's try it again. One more time. Here we go with the roll. All right. This time we did it all across the board. I rolled an 11 for the 13, so that succeeds. I rolled a 14 for the 15, that succeeds. And a 3 for the 14, so that succeeds. So we succeed. I need to spend the six points down to 20. So hopefully we don't have to hold, cast a whole bunch. Um, 216, here we go. Your mind feels swallowed by the wall as if pressed through a keyhole that suddenly appeared in the stone. Then your awareness explodes into the Archmage's room. You have never been here before and it takes you a moment to orient yourself. Magister Erlon's room is huge compared to your humble quarters. His opulent bed, covered with blue veils, sits in one side chamber, and you think you can see a cast iron bathtub in another side chamber with luxury, and this is not all. The room is dominated by an eye-catching piece of furniture, Archmage Erlon's huge, impressively carved desk, which sits between two nine-foot shelves stuffed with books and rolls of parchment. Only a true artist could have given form to the creatures carved into the desk's surface. You see a dragon, a cyclops, a demonic shruff, a fantastic winged serpent, and many others. With a start, you realize the carved figures are moving. Two armed dwarves wage an eternal struggle against a type of dragon called a wyvern. They advance and retreat several inches across the surface as they fight. Nearby, the winged serpent dodges several blasts of magic fire hurled by a mage. Then it lunges forward, fangs poised to strike, but the mage dodges nimbly and fires another blast of flame at the nimble serpent. Their scary, lifelike, and fascinating battle continues, and you must expend some effort to look away. Hanging on a wall, you see three long magic staves, one pitch black and shattered in the middle. Next to them, you see two cross slender ceremonial swords, their pommels shaped like roaring lion heads, and their cross guards shaped like lion paws. Most exciting of all is a polished ball that looks as if it was made of glass filled with slow-moving gray fog. The ball rests on a six-fingered hand and scaly forearm that rise, rises out of dark gray column, out of a dark gray column anchored to the stone floor. The only thing that you do not see is Magister Erlon. You also do not see either of your two proctors, that inscrutable half-elf, Magister Mela Moonhair, and Magister Bretum who most students secretly refer to as Myla's shadow. Disappointed, you start to climb back when you notice something else. One of the carpets is askew. One corner is rolled up and another is pushed against one of the chairs. Magister Erlon's desk is messy, which seems out of place for a room that is otherwise so orderly. Then you spy other things that you did not notice before. A crushed piece of chocolate candy on the floor, an overturned vase, and a small puddle that nobody bothered to wipe up. A row of books, leaning at an unusual angle on a shelf, revealing four deep, almost parallel scratches in the wood. Oh, here's a little picture. Something is wrong, you are certain. These are signs of a struggle, and someone tried to hide the evidence. Who could have fought here? Nobody can enter Archmage Erlon's room without permission, so the mage must have admitted his attacker or attackers into the room. A thrill of danger runs down your spine. You feel an agent of the Imperium Garethian. You feel like an agent of the Imperial Garethian Information Agency on a secret mission, investigating a crime. What happened to Magister Erlon? You see no traces of blood. He may have been abducted, but whom would be so bold and why? You need answers. But where to find them? Your exam is likely likely to be canceled which means you will not graduate today. Magistra Moonhair would jump for joy if she knew. Wait, Magistra Moonhair, your exam, it all fits. You have a suspect, and a motive. Anger wells up inside you and you almost lose your footing. You quickly climb back through the stained glass window 
and return to the safety of the corridor. Already planning your next move, you must find Magister Aralon and gather evidence against Magister Moonhair. Subtract 6 AE, which we did, um, from your total and go to section 167. So <clears throat> I think we're not quite going to go to that point yet. As I said, my voice has not been feeling great, and I feel it starting to go. So I think we're going to call it there for today. Uh, we'll be back Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time to see what happens next, um, to see if Magister Moonhair is responsible for this or what happens. So we will come back. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you want to see the first parts of, uh, of my solo adventures where I played uh, the Vampire of Havana, you can go check those out on our YouTube channel. Uh, we just put a new streaming uh, episode or article up on the website, so go check that out. Uh, it's got all of the streaming and uh, video on demand uh, videos that we've been putting out this past week, and we'll continue to put out more. So um, please join us when those go live. Uh, go ahead and make sure you follow us here on um, on Twitch, and this will go up uh, to YouTube. If you're just ca if you're just watching now, you know you can catch the beginning of it on YouTube or on Twitch as well. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye bye.